Welcome back to the channel. In the last video we were able to add our theme into our website and now we're just going to fix a couple of things to make it more legitimate as a theme. We're going to add a version number, we're going to add who created this theme, we're going to add a description right here and we're going to do that with a very simple comment inside our styles.css file. So let me open up my editor and inside here I'm just going to paste this little code and I'll explain to you what it does. So we have our theme name, Sticky Food, we have our theme URI which is the, the URL or the web link for where the theme is going to be. We have an author who is me, of course I've put my author URI and I've also added a description, added a version and I've decided to go for 4.9 as the last or the least version of WordPress that I will support. I'll also add the PHP version which is 5.6. Now these two are new features that have been added in WordPress much much later. Initially you didn't need them but now you, you have to put them so that you can show what you support and block other people from downloading or using the theme in the event that you don't want to support the version of PHP they are on or the version of WordPress which they are on. Depending you could be using particular functions that are only in later versions, so that's why you would restrict these few pieces. Then of course we add the license and the license URI so that someone can read it and then we're going to add our own text domain which I'll call Techie Food and of course I'll add some tags which is restaurant and food and these are helpful so that when someone comes to themes and maybe they want to add a new theme and they are searching in here, they should be able to look up something. Let's say you're looking for restaurants, they should be able to find your theme, let's say if you listed it on the repository and they'll be able to click and install and have it in there. Now the other thing that I wanted to share with you is that when you're choosing a theme name, you need to make sure that this theme name is not available already on the repo because what will happen if you have a theme and that same theme with a similar name on the WordPress repo is updated and let's say it's in version 2 and while you have version 1, WordPress is going to tell you there's an update for your theme and you might mistakenly or your client might make a mistake and click the update button and that will overwrite your whole theme and that will cause you problems at the end of the day. So make sure you get a unique name for your theme and then you can write it. So let's save this, now on saving this I'm going to come back to our themes and you'll see that now our theme actually has proper details like the tags, it has a description, it has who is the author and you can click on that to go and see who the author is or where they're located and we have a version number. So, so since we have this ready, now we are ready to start building. When I open up my mockup of the site that I'm going to be developing, you realize that we have some parts of this that are going to keep on repeating themselves and these particular pieces are good to have in the header. And this is just like how HTML works. Now don't get a misconception, what WordPress does is that it uses PHP, it uses all those different languages so that at the end of the day it basically just delivers HTML which is the language of the web. It will add CSS, it will add dynamic content using the PHP which is a server language but at the end of the day it's just HTML and CSS that's going to show up. So we have these parts that are repeating and I think I am just going to have these in one particular file. Now PHP offers us a very good platform for us to have a repeated file that we can always call in over and over again and what WordPress has done is that it has used that technology to build what we call a header file that we can always put inside our code. So we have what we call a header.php file. And the way we are going to call this, let's say in our index file and in our front page and in our single, is we are going to use something that's very simple. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to use a function which is called getHeader and then I'll put a semicolon. 
Now inside our header right here is where I'm going to put our PHP tags. I'm going to add a comment here and say all our header stuff comes here. So since this is going to be our header, I'm going to echo the header in here and save this, and then what I'm going to do is that instead of having this only in the front page, I'm going to copy it from here, put it in our 404, put it in our single.php, and then I'm also going to put it inside our index. So I'm going to do that, then I'm going to choose to save all, and I'll add these simple lines to define my pages. For the single, we'll have single template, we'll have the 404 on our 404 page, we'll have front page on the front page, and we'll have index for the index page so that we can be able to make them very distinct. Now on saving this, let me preview in my browser. So I'm going to reload here, you'll see that we get our header on this page, I'm going to put in a random link, let's say dash contact us, which does not exist, and you'll see that we get nothing here, so I'll check my themes, and you're going to realize inside these files here we have the different templates, and the reason why this is so is because my editor is not synchronizing, so let me just copy what I have here, and then just paste it in my editor here, so we'll add our code from here and click update, and if we come back here and reload, we should be getting a header for 4. Of course the 404 coming from our page, and also the header announcement coming from our get header. So from this point on we're going to start adding particular things that we have in HTML, and just add them to our header. So the first thing that I will do is close off this PHP, then I'll start writing some HTML. We'll start off by writing our doc type and say we're going to write HTML, and inside here we're going to have our HTML, I'll open, of course this will automatically close, but we're going to close this inside our footer, so we'll have our HTML showing up here, then we can have a title, which is next, and of course we need to close off our title, and our title could be take your food, and then of course in our HTML we can add our language, the language that we want, since we're using WordPress and we can determine the language that we are going to be using for the website, inside our settings in the general, we can use PHP to throw out our language, so I'm going to add PHP tags here, and we shall be using a function called language underscore attributes, and we'll add a semicolon right here and save this. So when we save that, and come back here, I'm going to inspect the page, so that we can see the HTML that's showing, I'm going to reload this, and you'll see that now we have HTML, we have a language which is en-us, and if by any chance we went into our general settings, and changed our website, let's say from English US and changed it to Deutsch, which is German, and save this, of course now our whole website changes into German, and if we reload here, we're going to see that it changes to a .de, .de language format, and of course we have our, head, our header here with the title, but at least we are able to see that we can change the language, so I'll change this back to US, save that, and then we'll continue editing our theme. Now those little details of using PHP to add dynamic content to our pages is what WordPress is really good at, and that's why it's a CMS. So even our title, we do not have to have it static like this, because if we leave our header like this, it means every single page we're going to load is going to have only this. But we want to use things like Yoast SEO to boost our SEO, we want to have dynamic titles, we can use different plugins for our SEO, so that means we have to have a dynamic title actually showing up here. 
Now for us to use a dynamic title here, we're going to remove this title and we're going to assume that WordPress is going to provide us that title and we're going to write some PHP here and we're going to start off with the function. Now after opening up with our PHP, we're going to use a function from WordPress which is called WP head and save. Now this WP head comes with so many things. Uh, let's first reload here our code and see what happens. And you'll see that it brings in all our link tags, it brings in the JavaScript that we have enqueued, we have styles from the different pieces and all of this is coming from WordPress and it loads by default. You'll see in here we have WooCommerce and we are seeing WooCommerce styles that are being brought in in here. Now this particular code is very powerful and if we left it out of our theme, I'll just enlarge this so that you can see it. If I leave this WP head out of our theme, we're going to miss out on what we have here from our WordPress and from the different plugins and how they load the scripts correctly. So we need to add that theme so that we can have the meta tag generators, we can have the CSS and some JavaScript that's loaded inside the head. We need to use the WP head function right here. After doing that I'm going to go in inside our theme functions and I'm going to start writing some PHP right here. Now we'll use a hook and the action hook we are going to tap into is actually called after setup theme and we're going to add in a function in here and we'll use a named function and we're going to call it techiepress theme setup. So with this we're going to copy it and then start off our function here. So we'll do that and we'll add our theme and in here we are going to add our supports for our theme. So first of all let me make this foolproof. I'm going to check if this function already exists then we should escape all of this. So I'm going to wrap this inside an if statement and say if this function does not exist, so function exists. So if this function of techiepress theme setup actually exists, then what we are going to do is skip everything that is in here. But if it doesn't, then we are going to run this code. Now inside this function of techiepress theme setup, we're going to add a theme support. So I'll tag this and say add theme support and inside this theme support we have so many options but the one that I'm going to look for first is actually called title tag and what this line of code means is that WordPress is going to provide us with our title tag from the different pages. Now that will allow the different plugins that we have for search engine optimization to also throw a particular tag on each page. So if I reload this here, you're going to see that this page is not found, we're having dynamic titles now and if I go back to our front page and reload, you're going to see that we have food theme development and the next piece is my WordPress blog. So we have food theme development, my WordPress blog. So by default WordPress gets the name of the company and then it also gets the tagline that you put in inside your settings here. So that's what you have here, the, the site title and the tagline showing up as the home pages title. So we are making things more dynamic but with very little code in here and this will allow us to enjoy the full functionality of WordPress. Now with add theme support, this is not the only tag that is available. So I'm going to copy this and look it up in the WordPress codecs. So I'll just Google this and say add theme support and we'll go to the developer codex and you're going to see that we have so many features and there are different arguments. So we can have the title tag, we can have a custom logo which we are going to use so it's good for me just to copy this or we'll type it so we have, we'll add theme support for a custom logo and it will require a height and a width for that particular logo. 
So in the features that we have, we have post formats, we have thumbnails, we have headers, we have custom background, we have a custom logo, we have menus, we have automatic feeds, HTML, and all these different things. Now the other ones that we do have here are a line-wide, dark editor style, disable custom colors, font sizes, color palettes, and these are new things that have come in with Gutenberg. Now what I'm going to do is just copy these, and then I am going to set them inside my page, but I will comment them out. So I'm just going to comment this so that whenever I need to pick anything, I'll be able to just pick it from my comments. Now to better understand what each of these features does, or what arguments that are needed along in the add theme support function, you need to look further down in the documentation to understand it better. So we can also see that we can add support for thumbnails, so in our code we'll add support for post thumbnails in here, and we can specify the kind of thumbnails that we want. We can want, we can add thumbnails for posts only, for pages, we can add it for maybe posts and a custom post type that's called movies, and we can add for the different post types that we want, or we can just generically add thumbnails for all our different posts. Now you'll see that we also have support for a custom background. So let's say in our design we had some particular pieces that were added in our background and they were repetitive or it was singular. We can add support for a custom background. Now let me add this to our code and you'll see what it does. I'm going to save for custom background, and when I go into appearance we have now a background that is active. So when we click on this we're able to add a custom background to our site and we can use that inside our website. So we have it available in our customizer and we can select an image. But look at this, if I comment this out and updated our file, reload, you'll see that now we no longer have the background showing up, because we've told WordPress we don't want to have your custom background inside our theme, we don't need it, it's not going to be working for us. So we can either add it inside our theme or we can remove it. Now give or take, depending on how you're going to use your theme, you can either add the background or remove it. Now in our case, I'm going to look for the particular theme supports that we are going to use in our particular case. So I see us using a custom header because we want people to be able to change this big image that we have here. We don't have to do anything different, we don't have to write extra code for it, so we can use the custom header in this case. So I'm going to add that here, and then I'll scroll down, we shall need a custom logo, so I'll copy this, and I can add our custom logo right here, but of course I want to use it with particular dimensions. Now I've made a little logo here from a free logo design that's going to look like this, it's a bit square in terms of size, but of course I can always make it rectangular in terms of nature, so I'm going to just copy the example that we have here, and it will allow us to have attributes of height, width, make it a flexible height or a flexible width, and then we can add the header text to it, like we can have our site title and description added behind in terms of the old text. So let me show you what that looks like, so I'm going to overwrite what we have here, and then I will tab this, so that we have this square 400 by 400, I'll reduce it to 200 so that it is a little bit smaller, and then I'm going to update this file. So before I reload here you will see that in the site identity we have a site icon only, but if I reload this, you're going to see that now we have a header image which we added originally, and when we come to the site identity, we have the site icon, but we also have the site logo. So at this point I'm going to add our logo, and I'm going to pick it from the desktop, and our logo is here, I'm going to upload the logo, 
Now you can see the 200 by 200 that we put inside our code is actually showing up right here. So we know the suggestion for the image is what we have inside our code here. Now we can do it differently depending on how our theme is set up. Let's say if we wanted to have a shorter but longer width, so we could have a width of 200 and then we could have a height of 150. For example, if I update this, and then I'm just going to reload this, you'll see that if we go to site identity, go to logo, it has now changed to 200 by 150. So I'll just upload this image, leave it in its entirety, skip cropping, and then I'm going to publish it. Now we don't have this logo showing up inside our site here because we have not reflected that particular logo inside our web page. Now how do we get this to work in our web page? Now for us to understand how we put this on the front page, we need to look at the custom logo for WordPress. So I'll Google this, go to custom logo, and we're going to see how we can apply this. So we are showed how we can add it into our theme setup. So if we get this code here and just paste it inside our particular theme, so I'm going to go to the head, I'll open this in a new page, and inside our head, just below our header.wp, I'm going to open some new PHP tags, and then I'm going to run our code and close off the PHP. I'll save this. If I reload this page, you'll see that now we have our logo showing up right here. So even if we changed this logo and put something that's different, let's say this image, we'll skip the cropping, and publish, you're going to see that this logo is going to change into what we have here. So let me reload this. You'll see that now we have a new image of our logo right here. So we can either use this function to get all the code showing up here, so let me inspect this, and you will see that we are given a whole bunch of code, we're given an ATAR, we have an image in here, but if we have our own custom design, of the logo, we don't have to pick this. We can decide to just get the URL by getting the code that we have here. So I'm going to go back into our editor, and instead of having this if function, I'm just going to dump the code here that's going to get a custom logo ID, and it will get it from this function of get the mode that's picking the logo from our customizer, and then on picking the ID, it will pass it into this WordPress function that looks for the image source, and we're going to get the full size of it. Now, after getting this variable having the link to our particular logo, we can then check if we have a custom logo supported by our theme, then we can pass in our own markup. I'm just going to clean this out a bit, we can pass in our logo, then we can pass in the alt tag having the blog name, that is the name of the website, or else we shall just pass in an h1 tag if there is no logo actually inside our page. So I'll save this, and I'm going to reload here, and you'll see that we are getting our HTML to show up because there is a logo in here, but we're not getting the source of our image, so let me check what the issue is right there. So I'm going to do some troubleshooting here to see why we don't have our logo, I've added some var dumps uh, in here, and I've saved that. So when I reload this page, you will see that we have a string showing us the ID of the logo, but we have an array of data coming in through here. So I'm just going to add on the square brackets with the zero on this, so let me save this. And then when I reload here, you'll see that our image actually shows up right now. And now when we go to site identity and go to the logo and we click change logo, and we click our new logo, click select, skip cropping, and click publish. So we'll just add our new logo right here, and then I'll clean out the var dumps so that we don't have them. I'll just go back into our header, 
on a new page and then I'll take out the verdams. I'll tap this and then we'll know this is part of our header. So there are many things that we can add in our theme support, like for example adding automatic feed links to our posts and comments in the head, so I can copy this and just add it in there. We're also going to add support for HTML5, for example the comment list, the comment form and all those other pieces, we're just going to add HTML5 support, so I'll paste that in there. And then of course we'll have customizing selective refresh for widgets, we want to be able to see when we add a new widget in the customizer we should have a refresh of that and we can see an instant preview. So the, you can read more on the documentation about these different pieces of theme support and see if they are viable for your particular theme. So right now this is what we have here, I'm not going to be using the comment list and comment forms for now, but I can leave them there so that when I make a single post I should allow people to be able to actually comment on that, but in this particular case we're not going to use any custom background, so I'll leave that out, I'm going to now save this. Now one final thing that I would share with you is that with our custom with our custom background or a custom header, we're able to define the default color and the default images. So let me just go to that and you'll see in here that you actually have these different pieces, so you can define an image, you can define the width and height, the header text, a video, and because you can define a default image, if your client or the user of your theme forgets to add an image, they could be able to pick the one that you have set up inside your own theme. So you would set up an image in your files, in your files that you have here, let's say you open a folder called images and you keep an image inside there, and then you would set it up inside your theme with your theme support and just link to that particular file. So that will give you a default image and also you can add a default background color. So next we are going to make our website more real life like, we are going to change our front end and add more to what we have here in our logo. So we're going to look at our mockup, we're going to add the different colors and the different items that we have here, of course they'll be dynamic and we're going to make our whole website start flourishing. If you want to see that, stick around, subscribe to the channel, make sure to turn on the notification bell so that you get all the updates of the new videos that are coming out, and let your friends know, share the video with them, let them walk with you this journey, because the best way for you to learn is to have someone walking alongside you, otherwise thank you for sticking with me and enjoy your day.